Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. I might start saying welcome to Poor Boy's Little Poolside. Anyway, guys, today I've been getting some requests to do some different pool videos. So today we're going to do a video on just back washing and rinsing and cleaning your strainer basket on your sand pro 75d sand filter or any other kind of sand filter it's pretty much going to be the same process but it's a beautiful day i've been working in my garden come up here and was sitting here taking a break and i said well what about a good day to do another video for my friends and fellow followers out there and anybody else that might come along that wants to see how the Sand Pro 75D operates or any other Sand Pro filter. So I'm going to go over here and let's get started, guys. I'm thinking about jumping in that pool. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to jump in the pool or not. Y'all better watch out for one of these videos. I'm going to surprise y'all. I'm going to be sitting up here in my overalls and all of a sudden I'm going to just say I'm going swimming. I'm finna act like Gus on old Lonesome Dove. I'm gonna strip my overalls off to my long johnnies and get in the swimming pool. <laughs> Let's get over here and get started. Okay, guys, you can hear my pump. It's in filtration mode, it's running. If yours is running, or if it ain't running, the first thing you wanna do is go turn the power off. Now I'm going to go turn the power off, and then I'll bring y'all up here closer and show y'all the next step. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring y'all around here and show you how you determine when your filter needs backwashed. On this side where this gauge is, when you do your first setup and start up, the directions tell you once you get your pool set up and started, you look at this gauge and see how much pressure it's on. The line's running like 11 pounds. Then it tells you to don't let it go over 11 pounds above that. So mine would be 22 PSI max. So before it got to 22 PSI is when I would need to do a backwash. So I'm going to bring y'all around here and show y'all that. I'm also, why I have you over here up close, I'm going to show you an up close view of the top of this Sand Pro 75D. That way you can see the positions that it can be set in. So come over here and take a look real quick. So over here is the gauge. And like I said, it's off right now, so it's reading zero. But after I had mine set up and started, after the first initial setup, it was running like 10 to 11 pounds. And that's the red numbers on the inside, PSI. According to the directions, I don't want to let it get 11 PSI above that. So this one here would be, don't go over 22 max. Now yours may be different. That's why they say you can't go by to my numbers. Whenever you first set your sand filter up, you look and see what it's running when it has clean sand in it. And that'll be your, where you start to get your 11 pounds over. So you can't go by mine pumping 10 to 11 pounds because yours might be pumping a different number when it's clean. You just don't want to let it go over 11 pounds above that. Also, anytime you're going to backwash, it's a good time right now. After you turn your pump off, it's a good time to go on and clean your basket. But to clean your basket, you have to Close your valves. Coming in from the port B. 
If you ain't got vowels, like I have mine plumed with vowels, you'll have to plug your port B, whether your pool's got one port B or two port Bs. You'll have to plug your port Bs. So on mine, that's why I plumbed it. All I gotta do is turn my vowel. Then over here on the point A, port A side, I close this vowel, and if you ain't got this plumbed, on this Coleman pool, it come with a vial right here at Port A. You would close it right there. Then you come back and you open your basket. See, mine's got just a little bit of grass in it. I'm gonna just dump that out. And guys, here's the important part on this basket. See that basket has a hole right here where I'm pointing with my finger? Got a U-shaped hole. That side has a slot. It, it has to face where your plumbing's coming in from your port B, coming into your pump. If you don't put it in there just like that, if you have it turned like that, then it ain't gonna let your trash go into your bunk basket. It's gonna be on the outside of the basket and can go on and go through your filter. So it has to be, this part right here has to face the incoming from port B. And you can go on and put your top bag on. Now that I ain't got the camera in my hand, I'm gonna go on and put my top bag on, make sure it's on right and tighten it. I was trying to work with one hand there. Alright. So now at this point, don't forget to open your vials back and remove your plugs. Now guys, if you looked in your basket like this one has a clear top on it, and you look through there and you don't see no trash in there, then you never would even plug your port B's. Only reason you have to plug them is so you can open this strainer basket and remove your debris out of it. If you ain't got no debris in it, all you gonna do is backwash and rinse. You don't have to plug your port B's or like me, close my valves. So now I'm gonna bring you over here up close so y'all can see the settings on top of the sand filter here give you a straight down shot so you can see this is got the little air side here on the handle that's in filtration mode that's where it's at when it's normal that's filtering your water through your pool the next setting going clockwise is winterization which is I got it circled and got vacuum wrote on there. Cause if you watch my video on how to use your sand filter to use a hand vacuum, that's where I want to use my hand vacuum is in winter rising. You need to go back and watch that video and it'll explain why. So I'm gonna go on and turn my handle. That's filtration. When you use your handle, you push down on it and then turn it. So there's winterization. You come around, the next one's closed. You come on around, and the next one's backwash. And then you move a little more, and the next one's rinse. And then you back to filtration. So I'm giving y'all a close-up shot. So you can see this, I had someone request this because theirs is done sun, done faded, and they couldn't remember where the positions are. Okay, now that I've showed y'all everything, we're just gonna do a short little recap right here at this point. So the first thing you do, you look at your gauge, and if it's getting close to 10 to 11 pounds above your normal running pressure, it's time to backwash. First thing you do is turn your pump off, which you already done. Now at that point, look in your drain basket 
And if it's got any debris in there, you need to clean it at this time. Me, I would just close my valve, both valves, undo my strainer basket cap, clean my basket, put it back in, open my valves back. If you ain't got yours plumb set up like this or don't plan on it, you would have to plug your port bees. If you got one port bee, that's the water coming from the pool to the pump. Or if your pool has two port bees like this one, you would have to use the little rubber plugs that come with the pool and plug them holes. Closing your port A vial, which this Coleman pool comes with a vial right here, you could just close it. Open your strainer basket, clean your strainer out. Like I said in the earlier, make sure that strainer basket is put back in that correct position. Put your lid back on. You then, then you gotta remove your plugs. Open your valves back. And now we up to the point where I left off. So now I'm ready to start a backwash. So I'm gonna remove my waste plug, which I have mine, I put a vial here, but here's the plug. I'm gonna open my waste vial right here. Now if you did, yours ain't got a waste vial on it, this plug's gonna be screwed in right here into the top of this filter, just remove it. Then you're gonna open your valve, turn it all the way around and put it in backwash position. And water's gonna start coming out, but it ain't pumping it out. That's just water free flowing. So I'm gonna close this valve for a moment while I'm talking. So when you backwashing, you are draining water out of your pool. So you don't want to start no backwash and go off somewhere and forget about it because you'll drain your pool. But when you backwash and you want to run it long enough till you start seeing real clean water come out. Because what's happening, the sand filter tank is full of sand and that's what catches all the algae and debris and dust and pollen and everything else that comes out of your swimming pool is collected in that sand. So when you put it in backwash position, it redirects the flow of the water inside this tank and it disrupts that sand in there, getting it all stirred up, just washing the, everything out of it and it's coming out the waste hole. And that's why you wanna do it long enough to make sure it's good and clean. So right now, I'm gonna go turn my pump on and you're gonna see water coming out here. I'm gonna give it just a few seconds cause mine's ain't dirty. But you would wanna run yours until you see the clean water. Okay, y'all see it's pumping water. And even though my pressure wasn't up, I can still see mine still has a little brown tint to it. So I'm gonna let it go on and Run a little bit here. And like I said, guys, it's stirring up that sand in that tank. And that's why the next step we're going to do is the rinse is real important because it, it's more important than it sounds. It sounds like you're just rinsing something. Well, you, you actually, when you go to the next step, and that's why it recommends running it for 60 seconds, you got to. Right now we're disrupting that sand, stirring it up, stirring it up, stirring it up. Well, in order for it to settle it back down, you gotta put it in a rinse position and it's gonna make the water redirect the flow and it's gonna settle that sand back in that tank. That way it'll be settled in good and tight. That way it'll filter out your pool water. All right, so I'm saying I'm looking good enough since mine really wasn't dirty. Go turn your power off right now. Now don't mess up and go turning these valves while it's doing this. Go turn your power off before you go turning any of that because you'll mess this up. 
If you reached down here right now and just started turning that valve to a new position, it's probably going to tear your pump up. Alright, so now, I'm going to close that while I'm talking. Right now, all you do is move this to rinse position and turn your pump back on and let it rinse a minimum of 60 seconds, one minute. Don't go under that. Like I said, it's very important because it's settling all the sand back down. There's three things that I can, I want to make sure that everybody understands. One is your strainer basket. When it goes in, it's got to be in the right position. If it ain't, it's not going to catch your debris coming through your strainer basket. Two is do not ever turn these valves why that pump is running. Never. Three is you always, always, always rinse after you backwash or you add new sand. If, if, if that's every year or whenever you decide you're gonna replace your sand and put new sand, you go through your backwash and your rinse position. If you don't go through this rinse position, and let it rinse and settle that sand back down. The odds is when you turn it into filtration and, and start filtering your pool, that first little bit's gonna blow dirty sand into your pool. That's why you need to rinse. It's so important to get that sand settled back down before you start up. So that's the three most important tips I can give y'all guys. All right, now I'm gonna go turn my pump off. I'm going to close my valve. So now you would take your valve and you would go from rinse to your filtration position. You would take your plug and screw it back in your waste port. Which mine, I put an extra valve here, so I'm just screwing it in there. The reason I do to put this plug in there, I don't want no wasp building no nest up in that pipe. Now guys, that's it. Turn the power back on and your pool should be up and running again. But I'm gonna throw in one extra tip in here. I need to do it before I turn my pump back on. If you get a Flash 65 vacuum or you've ever planned to, in the end of this hose is a little screen. And I put this in my video about the Player 65, and I'm just giving y'all extra bonus tip here. This screen here, you can, it, it don't take, I'm talking about it don't take much debris at all in there. Just a few little pieces of little bitty stuff. And that Player 65 won't work right. That Polaris 65 has got to have a certain amount of pressure in it. That's why you see a lot of bad reviews on it online. It's because people say they got it, and all it does is go around and wind up in a circle. <laughs> what they don't understand, they ain't got enough pressure going to it. Their pump's too little or something. Because that Polaris 65, every 25 seconds, it'll change to reverse. And it's got to have a certain amount of water pressure to do that. That's why I was suggesting in all my videos, this is the bare minimum pump that I would get to run this because it has to have so much pressure to make that Polaris change gears. And I'm using that gears, I don't think they call it gears, but it does. Every 25 seconds it'll be going one way and then all of a sudden it'll swap and it starts blowing water the other way out of it and that makes it go backwards. So when you see them reviews and people are giving them bad reviews and they say they wind up in a circle, there's something wrong with their Polaris. It ain't changing gears. Also, the directions tell you that uh, if you got the proper setup and it's working and it one day you come out here and it ain't working right, you can take them apart and clean in there. That means some trash has probably done got through and got into there and it ain't letting it change its position. So I'm finna wash this out real quick and I'll be right back. Y'all don't go nowhere, you hear? Alright guys, I'm finna put this back on. 
I'm finna turn my pump on, and I'm gonna go up there and sit on that umbrella, and we're gonna have a little talk. Y'all ready for a little talk? All right, guys. So we back washed, we rinsed. Can y'all see that Polaris? All right, it's finna come by. See if y'all can see it. See it going forward? Now y'all watch it. While I'm talking, it's gonna change directions now. Let me move out of the way. See, it just changed directions, started backing up. That's what I try to tell people. But I told y'all we was gonna have a talk when I got up here on my umbrella. I actually lied to y'all, we're gonna have a test, a pop quiz. So what's the pop quiz? What's the three most important things you need to do or not to do with your sand filter? Some of you, some of you getting it right. Uh, I think I heard one of you mess up there. <laughs> one of you got two of them, but you didn't get the third one. Yeah, I know I ain't live. That's all right. So one, when you clean your strainer basket, it has to go in a certain direction. If it don't, it ain't working. Number two, never turn your vial on top of your sand filters with it running. Make sure the power's off, not pumping water at the time. And number three, always rinse for 60 seconds or more after you backwash or add new sand to a sand filter. Always, always, always. All right, guys, I hope this little video here helps someone out on how to backwash and rinse their filter. Maybe you already knew how to do it, but maybe you didn't quite understand what was happening what backwash actually did and what rents actually done and all that good stuff so i hope this helps someone out please guys the best way you can help me is to like subscribe and share your videos on your social medias that's the best way you can help me grow this channel thanks for watching god bless it's going to be a next time. See y'all next time.